The Lord of the Rings Online, or Lotro as it's commonly referred to, is an MMO that launched April 24, 2007 from developer Turbine. Since then, it's been through a lot, you know, expansions, updates, changes in developers and publishers from sales, but now it's run by Standing Stone Games, and going into 2021, it has a solid base of players and hardcore fans that really enjoy it. I consider myself a die-hard Lord of the Rings fan, but strangely only thought to give the game a try this past summer in 2020 during this pandemic sale that encouraged new and old players to just come check out, you know, a decade plus of content for free. So with an MMO-sized hole in my life at the time, I downloaded the game, made a couple characters, and uh, shit, I was completely hooked. <laughs> my brother and several friends eventually joined me, and I mean, dude, we lived out our fantasy. Exploring a virtual Middle Earth and living in the Shire, decorating our holes with odds and ends that we had found out in the world, and re-rolling classes more times than I care to admit. But over the hundreds and hundreds of hours I had begun to pour into the game, I found myself finding the most joy in not fighting or advancing the main quest line, which is really good, or even leveling up and becoming more powerful, but just exploring. I mean, finding little corners of Middle Earth and just sitting and enjoying the scenery. It was in these quiet moments in the Shire or the Trollshaws or Breland where I was struck with how much soul this game has. If you haven't seen my previous video about soul regarding Chrono Cross for PS1, please check that out. But to me, soul is this kind of intangible, immeasurable substance that just oozes from some games, and for me anyway, it's usually older games. A more civilized age where gaming was less corporate and developers wouldn't have as much of a gun to their head from higher ups. Games weren't these polished movie-like experiences where cracks, if present, stuck out like a sore thumb. It was a time of imagination and interpretation, usually set behind some hardware limitations. And don't get me wrong, there are also new games that have that sort of soul, heart, and care put into them, but the ones that get me really good tend to be of an older style. So with that out of the way, where does the soul come from in Lotro? Well, you know, I've spoken to hundreds of government officials and CIA soul scientists to decipher the game, and we have boiled it down to several key soul fragments, we'll call them. Number one, the game interpreting the true source material of the books, not just adapting the films. Number two, the class design and player fantasy in the game. And number three, the music and the role it plays not only in Lotro, but in Lord of the Rings thematically. Before we dive fully into these three fragments, I want to make it clear that this game is not perfect by any stretch. It has an undeniable kind of jank to it, you know, performance issues, etc., along with a pretty irritating cash shop that's kind of wormed its way into the game over the years, and now in the modern age is somewhat touched by those corporate hands that are just, you know, looking for your wallet. But with that said, let's get to the goods. In 2007 with the game's launch, The Return of the King had been released just four years before. You know, I mean, the success of the film trilogy had The Lord of the Rings at all-time highs. Many things attached themselves to the success train, understandably, sticking Elijah Wood and Viggo Mortensen's face on pretty much anything with a price tag. But all the while, Turbine had been creating a virtual version of this universe without letting any of the Hollywood representations of Middle-earth come within arm's reach of the game. It's actually kind of insane looking back on it. I mean, this was the time, if there ever was one, to hitch a ride on that popularity, put the actors' faces into the game, you know, make the Shire look like this, and Moria look like that, to a T, to bring in all of these new potential fans with cash in hand. But instead, Turbine showed restraint and stuck to the books. Here's a quote from Jeffrey Stiefel, who was executive producer. Everything we do starts from what did Tolkien write? What world did he create? And what was his intention? They used the books as a blueprint and relied on Tolkien's immense amount of detail to create locations that were as close to the original descriptions as humanly possible. This is a massive strength and a huge reason, I think, why the game is even still alive today. The community, at least on my server of Brandywine, are, I mean, hardcore Lord of the Rings fans, and they seem to lean a little older than other MMOs. I don't think the game would have a long-standing crowd period to RP level alts and enjoy the world and exploration if it wasn't so true to Tolkien's writings of Middle-earth. 
I've even seen people talking lore in world chat, bashing the films, which I love, and saying that, you know, the game got this or that better. Now, in all fairness, Lotro has added content over the years that is quite frankly, lore breaking. The Bayornin class, even the Runekeeper caster class to an extent. But the goodwill was built up with the player base and that the base world, the most vital part, is sound. To quote another great uh, man, I think, Twindle Thumb 22245 from a YouTube comment I saw on some random video a while ago. Quote, Lotro is the best fanfic ever because its core is the most true thing to the books we have. Well said, Twindle Thumb. But how does this contribute to the soul of the game? Well, for me, loving the books so much as I do, nothing compares to them. Just, just nothing but being able to create my character and visit locations like Tom Bombadil's house and the house at Crick Hollow or just random corners of Bree that we never got to see in the films is a special experience. It roots the game in the original intention of these locations and characters in the world. With a medium like video games and especially an MMO, you have no restraints as far as world design. You know players are going to spend thousands of collective hours just poking around and exploring every corner. So using this as the blueprint opposed to this? Amazing choice that leads to a deep and convincing world for fans for years. Number two is class design. Now class design is always going to be one of the pillars of any MMO experience. Deciding playstyle is the biggest decision facing a new or old player. Lord of the Rings is littered with interesting ideas that, you know, could be translated into player classes. When the game launched, there were seven initial options. The Burglar, the Captain, the Champion, the Guardian, the Hunter, the Loremaster, and the Minstrel. All of these classes even tell you in the corner which recognizable character the class is kind of based off. With other MMOs, the possibilities are limitless, right? Variations of wizards, rogues, warriors, half-demons, summoners, and so on. But in Lord of the Rings, I mean, there's only a handful of wizards who exist, period. All of them are absolutely vital to the dealings of the world. So, you know, things already have to be pared back a bit to make some sense. Later on, three more classes were added in the Warden, the Runekeeper, and the Bayorning, the latter two being somewhat the lore-breaking or bending ones. But when you make a character in Lotro and you start to dig into each class and the three different specialization trees for each, you can really see how they nailed the fantasy of living and fighting for your life in Middle-earth. You really aren't a great hero of legend, taking the ring to Mordor. You're sort of an agent, assisting the big guys in the Fellowship from the shadows, clearing a path for them or dealing with annoyances that they don't have to. No prophecies or chosen one tropes really get in your way in Lotro, and I really love that. I think it adds to the charm big time. Just for an example of the unique nature of class design, the rogue archetype in games is usually something like this. In Lotro, it's based on this. The burglar is a support class, usually used in group content for like debuffing, things like that. Another one, the captain, is probably the class most unique to Lotro, and I think probably the most loved class. It's a jack-of-all-trades kind of field commander class. They wear heavy armor, but they can tank, heal, or DPS. The captain is a leader, but he's nothing without the assistance of allies. It's another key theme in Lord of the Rings. You might expect the guardian class, one of my favorites, to be based off the lore of Boromir with his shield, or even Aragorn with his sort of watchful eye as a protector over the hobbits and eventually Gondor, but no, it's based off Samwise the Brave, which I think is perfect. Class design is yet another instance of the developers not bending to meet the flashiness of other games at the time. The fantasy and RP is limitless here if you're a fan of Lord of the Rings. And this is one of the key elements of the soul of the game. Every player you encounter feels like an inhabitant of Middle-earth out on their own journey. In another quote from Jeffrey Stiefel before the game even launched, quote, it's funny creating an empty world because the players aren't here yet. They are the ones who will inhabit the world and we want to nail it for them. Well, Mr. Stiefel, you really did. The third and final soul fragment is probably my favorite, and that is music. In the Lord of the Rings books, and especially supplemental books like the Silmarillion or Unfinished Tales, 
Music plays a huge role in this world. It's how many histories and cultures of Middle-earth are shared. It binds generations together in the lore and keeps legends alive. So it's fitting that not only here in Lotro is there an entire class devoted to music and harnessing it to either damage enemies or heal homies, but that most towns have a town bard where any class can just pull up, you know, buy an instrument, equip it, and play notes with the number keys. Of course, some players take this to insane lengths to form bands, hold concerts, server events based around music. Then there's my dumbass just hitting that. The addition of player-played music would be enough soul for one mortal to handle on its own, but the ambient music that plays throughout the game is just fantastic. It achieves the impossible yet again and captures the feeling of each environment from the books in a perfect way without at all ripping off Howard Shore and the amazing job he did doing the very same thing just years before with the films. The music of the Shire here is probably my favorite perfectly capturing the sort of lazy innocence of the hobbits. Then you have this kind of echoing, haunting music that plays in Angmar, the original endgame zone. From what I can gather, most of the music was done by Chance Thomas, Stephen D. Gregorio, along with Brad Spear and Jeff Scott. Those dudes just nailed it, man. This was their own take on the sounds of Middle Earth, and somehow the music sounds nostalgic the first time you hear it. Now that's soul, baby. I could go on and on and on. There are many more things I love about this game, and several things I dislike. But in my opinion, this is where the soul comes from. That magical feeling you have when you think back on your time spent in a game. And I'll give them a plug. You know, the game is free to try. So I encourage anyone and everyone to just give it a go. Lotro is truly a soulful gem. And it's still chugging along years later. Thank you everybody for watching this video. Uh, check out my Discord link down below if you want to join up for some memes. And um, stay tuned for more content. Peace.